I have so many dream journals from the past, but uh, I've, I've been slacking lately. I got to be honest. I can't lie. And I, I will. I will get back on it for sure. Especially because for the last like year, I've really been getting into all this. And it's really bringing it all back so much. Um, Yo, Brian, see if you can request. There should be a little thing in, your, in the bottom left corner for you. When you click on that, I'm not exactly sure. I forget what it is for the other person. I'm going to send you another request. Hopefully it works. Okay, we got it. Beautiful. That's good. Can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. You sound great. Go. Cool. Very cool. Okay. Yeah, we can. Uh, I usually got to get myself focused better because it acts weird. You're good. That looks all right to me. Okay. Beautiful. How you doing, man? Yeah, good. Good. Yourself? Very good. Good. Very good. I'm sorry I was so late and, and things always take longer than I want them to. No, that's all right. I was hanging on to like 2 o'clock anyway, uh, just because obviously you, you do your show at 9, so I thought uh, best keep it getting the same for you. Make it, again, it's like a one-off for me, so nice. it's not too bad I can get through it. Yeah, yeah, man. That's great. I appreciate it very much. I really do. I, I know you're busy, man. It it looks like uh, with the way you're going with all your content, like you're you're a busy person. I, I see you putting up a lot. Yeah, it's well, it's all stuff I've had in my my head for years, really. So it's just getting it all out there eh? Eh, to start with. Obviously, as time goes on, it'll slow down and become more kind of like once a week, twice a week kind of thing. Uh, but initially, I just try to make that initial impact as well. You know, obviously know yourself what it's like, try to start things up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a lot. It is. So, uh, okay, so I'm curious. Just uh, if you want to tell the people your name and, like, your channel and, and where you come from. Cool. Right, well, my name's Brian. Uh, so I'm from Scotland. Uh, my channel's Dreamkeeper. You can see it there in the background. It's just on YouTube. Uh, so basically, from Scotland, uh, like my my main profession, I'm like a, a carpenter, like a woodworker. Uh, wow. Okay. So and just just like just kind of living the normal kind of Scottish life, I suppose. Uh, just like usual, nothing out of the ordinary or that, just obviously got like my family, my daughter, stuff like that. Yeah. Interesting. So, so, so you're another working man. I respect that. My dad's a carpenter. That's that's what I grew up doing with him as well. Cool. I respect that cool. profession a lot. Yeah, I really loved uh, the woodworking and that. Like I had like a... Uh, like that's like why my other stuff, like it's I called it timber punk. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was like I did all the traditional kind of woodworking stuff, but timber punk was more me kind of expressing myself, uh, kind of like the kind of artistic side of woodworking and all kind of cool, mm -hmm. like unusual stuff. And that's that's part of the reason why I go into the spiritual stuff as well because I made like a lot of stuff for people and they were saying it was quite spiritual stuff, it was like uh, incense burners and just all kind of cool stuff and a lot of people were saying that, they were like it's quite spirit, what you do is quite spiritual kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, and I was like I never even thought of it and they were even saying like uh, it's like a, a form of meditation, it's like creative meditation like when I'm making stuff because I just like zone out and just mm -hmm. uh, start making stuff so it was quite interesting and obviously it's led me down this kind of journey, down this path to, to where I'm on with this. Uh, I love it. There's definitely something to it. There's something to putting your intention and, and your love and, and your focus into something like that, giving it that energy for sure. Aye. 
it does. It g- gives you a lot of like uh, pride and satisfaction as well. My, uh, my dad is loving this conversation. Yeah, bye. I well, he'd be the same. It's when you make something, especially with your hands, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, like you see people using it or they appreciate it. Maybe it was they really needed it done. It was really handy for them, so people yeah. appreciate what you do and stuff. It's and it's just that a good sense of achievement for yourself. Like you can, it's something physical that you can like see. And you, you can say, well, I made that kind of thing. So, and if you're if you're any good, it'll last for a long time, kind of thing. So it's oh, yeah. uh, so it's all good that way. Like it's quite quite passionate about it, and that is like quite passionate in general about stuff that I, I do. Kind of thing. I love it. I wonder, did you uh, did you do that work behind you there? Yeah, I got it. so yeah. That, <clears throat> this has been quite a good thing for me. It was, uh, so most of it is like AI, can I, like see the logo, it was okay, like an yeah, AI, yeah. like photo creator, uh, and same with the, the thumbnails on the YouTube, because it, like, it's handy, because it's like, it's not copyright copyrighted or anything, because it's like a unique picture, that, right. like the AI created it, but I've told it what to create, can I think. Plus, it's, it was a real, although I'm quite artistic in that, and I do, like, draw and sketch and stuff. I'm not, like, a, like, really good at it kind of thing. So it's been, good, it's been good to use it because it lets me create, like, stuff in my, my mind. I, I can make it into a picture, like, basically, mm-hmm. basically instantly. So it's been great for this because, like, I can basically take all this stuff in my mind and it, it makes it like real kind of thing, well a picture so it's been good that way but I basically, I've, I've designed it and that and like I say, I'm not very too good at like video editing or, or stuff, like I've watched a few of your videos and you're really good at you've got all this stuff like I'm on. Not really, but thank you <laughs> well you're better than me anyway so, because <laughs> uh, I'm not really, believe it or not, I'm not really into like the kind of technical side of stuff, like I had to see, like, even making a video, like, of me talking. Like, I've never really made a video of me talking right. ever, until I started this, like, about, well, just over a month ago. So, yeah, wow. I think I'm doing all right. <laughs> like that, You're doing like. crazy good, honestly. So, uh, so what inspired the Dream Keeper? Where did that name come from? If you want to talk to the people a little, little bit about that, right? So the Dream Keeper, again, it was <clears throat> it was kind of like a, like sometimes I, I get kind of like visions or I just kind of like feel stuff, and it was like with us, it was drawn, like so I drew it kind of thing, and it, what it was was it was like a guy in like a white hooded cloak and he was standing like in a stone circle and it's, mm. I don't know if it's like channeling it through me or something like that but it, whatever it was it kind of stuck with me and I, I drew it it's in one of my videos uh, and it was like a guy with a white cloak on a hood up but he never had any face it was like a shadow face right. And, and right. I was looking at it and I was like what do I call that like what do I call this like uh, so I was like dream, dream keeper came, came to my mind I love it and then it, it spiralled from there into what I'm doing now uh, and I thought that was pretty cool how me and you stumbled across each other because of the name as well uh, like you've also been using it for, for years and years kind of thing so it means mm-hmm. something to you as well and uh, for me, it was just it just kind of came to me. It was no, I've never even thought about it before. It's not something like yeah. before with my other stuff, like with Timber Punk. I kind of thought about that name for a while, and right. uh, kind of came up with that. But with Dreamkeeper, it, it just kind of came to me, kind of thing, just for the the picture that I drew, uh, and then I just went for there, get like. Yeah, that's that's it is interesting, you know. It came from somewhere, and uh, I, I 
also noticed how in your videos, I only have to kind of mention this because because of the sake of synchronicity sometimes, but like you were talking about Metatron's cube in, in your one video. Yeah. And, uh, I know when I brought up Metatron in, in past videos, uh, most of my listeners weren't too familiar with it. And I did a really sloppy job of explaining it. And I'm going to do a video on the platonic solids and that's going to lead up into Metatron's cube. So I'm going to do that to clarify it for some people. But I thought it was really interesting that you had mentioned Metatron and, and, or Metatron's cube. And, uh, you had also talked about the, the, the figure that you saw. And, uh, I used to talk to Metatron in my dreams, the, what was, what's known as Metatron or, you know, the archangel. Yeah. Metatron. And I just, I wonder if that character, you know, may have been a form of that, of, of that being in some way or, or inspired by in some way subconsciously. I don't know. Uh, see, I'm not really sure because like Metatron's cube, but it's not something I really know much about either. Uh, I was speaking to somebody and they were on about it and uh, they were obviously telling me it was like an archangel and that and I've, I've actually got like tattoos eh? like uh, Gabriel and Michael and oh. uh, that like on me kind of thing so that's how we got talking about it and then when I was just looking at the, the, the like just the kind of design of it and then it got me thinking and I've, I've seen stuff in the past about the the uh, like hexagon or hexagram that's so yeah. the Saturn uh, the, the North Pole of Saturn right. and stuff like that right. and how that it symbolises like the black cube and then you've, mm -hmm. like, that got me down the road because I'm quite knowledgeable like uh, like historic, uh, historical wise can so tell. history stuff yeah. uh, so it kind of led me down a path uh, so, but I'm actually, I'm going to make another video about Metatron's Cube. Yeah, okay. Quite interesting. I'll not give you too much away, but I, I think it could all just be nonsense, but it's just what I think about it, just for looking at it and just for, for like, kind of what, what I make it, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, the basis of it, it all makes perfect sense fundamentally, and then there, you can, it could be interpreted and taken in so many directions and it's interesting and you're obvious you're obviously knowledgeable enough to know these things but then you're really intuitive i could like listening to your videos you I, I could tell you you're going off of mostly feelings and ideas but you do these little thought experiments with yourself while you're talking that there, and and i think a lot of times you you come to some really, really solid conclusions that are more verifiable than a lot of people might realize. And you're just rolling off the top of your head. That's why I love, I really enjoy your videos, actually. I, 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 think, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change your structure, is all I'm saying. Like, if you could do some uh, structured, scripted videos if you want, of course. But in my opinion, like, predominantly what you should focus on, what you've been doing is really unique. And, and it's, it's it's like I enjoy it. It's it's like traveling through a dreamscape while you're talking, even if you're not talking about a dream, just with with your ideas. You know, it's yeah. it's really good, man. No, you do great. I appreciate that. That that means a lot. It's when I started that, like obviously I watch YouTube and that, and a lot of the the creators and the videos, everything's like edited and it's all fast paced and. There's pictures flying in and stuff, and for me, like I don't know how to do that anyway. Like I'm not technical like that, but to me, I quite I quite like just just getting on camera and just saying what's in my head and just just rolling with it kind of thing. And that's probably what you've seen that mm -hmm. I start somewhere and then I kind of work through it and then I come to like a conclusion at the end kind of thing. And it's it's probably like my brain works like I just like just go with it eh, rather than hear it all structured and set out and all edited and cut and this and that so I, I, I probably will just stick with that kind of set up because I'm, I'm quite obviously like, like you're appreciating that and I think hopefully other people will as well mm -hmm. it's a bit different for, for what it's a bit like your live videos like you're no 
it's no way that you've been caught and all this. It's just you just talking, Bro. just Bro. like yeah. a kind of thing. So it's, I think it's quite a good thing. Like it's a bit different. Yeah, man. There's there's something organic that feel you know a good organic feeling because we're all wrapped up in this technological era. But any 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 sense of organic that anything that we can feel, if, you know, it's refreshing. I think to the human spirit. And and there is something organic about that. I gotta shout out Aaron because he homie is here watching, and Aaron's the man. Uh, if anyone wants to ask any questions as we go through, just throw them up in the comments. I'll try to read them, and I'm sorry if I ignore you. Uh, yeah, so, okay, so the Dream Keeper, we see where that came from, and then what exactly inspired your channel, and, and like, um, what, you know, uh, what is your hope for the future of the channel and, and what you're doing here? Right. So it was kind of, it's, it was basically, like, I'd say, some, like, I've always had dreams and, and stuff, not so much visions or anything like that, because I've never really meditated before, but it's normally, I'd normally have them just before I go to sleep, because, like, it's almost like I'm meditating, so I'm relaxed, and then when I shut my eyes, I can see things, so yeah. I've always had, had the dreams, and I've always kind of had the visions, but... I've never really looked into them or, or went any further with it. But just before, like, the, the pandemic, I had, like, a, a really, like, vivid like vivid dream. Uh, and it was, like, the, the girl with the blue hair. Like, I've got it in one of my videos. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what, what set off me thinking about all oh, this kind of dreams and stuff because in the dream, like, I met a girl in it and, like, I... I felt like I knew her in the dream, but I didn't, I didn't actually know her. It's not like somebody from real life or that. And, uh, like, like, there was nothing against her, but the feeling in the dream was, it was like a bad feeling, like anxiety and doom and stuff. Mm. Like, it wasn't like a, a good feeling, but it kind of stuck with me, and I, I was talking to people at work about it, because it was quite strange, because, like, I didn't know, like, I didn't, it's not somebody I know, and then, like, they were in my dream, so I was like, how how could they be in my dream if I didn't know them? Again, it, again, it was strange. Right. And then the blue hair, mm -hmm. and then it was literally, like, a few months later, the, the pandemic happened, and then lots of women about here were all dying their hair blue, kind of thing. So it was like, again, that's like, because it was, it, was it was like a noticeable, like, thing. That like, wasn't just one or two women, it was like lots and lots of women were all dying their hair blue and I was like that is uh, pretty pretty mad, like pretty strange and also I made the connection with that. It was so I it was it was quite like that. It was like it was, it was really strange kind of thing and it did kinda of stick with me. And then obviously like the, the like a few years have passed since then but then I've started like obviously thinking about it more and looking into it more and then I've spoke to a few people and and uh, they were quite interested in it and then I would see other dreams and other visions and then somebody was saying maybe I should like like try and actually like like if I hear a dream like write it down that way I, like I don't forget it and then I can like see what it means and then with the visions and we're like actually try and do it kind of thing and see mm -hmm. see what you see and it's been quite strange how many things that I've seen that, that that's quite relevant and stuff so it was all kind of spiraling it was almost like a like I say I've always had them and like that but recently it was like a, a switch went off kind of thing and it's just it's been very clear so that's what's, what's kind of led me to think, well, I want to kind of document this and I want to see, like, if anybody else can experience these things like that. And uh, obviously when, like, I was like, well, I'll make a YouTube channel kind of thing and right. just go, go from there because, like, uh, it's quite, like, an in interactive kind of setup because it's, it's like a video. So 
like people can watch it and they, they can get your kind of feeling from it better than like a post or something. Right. Yeah, uh, so more, more like personalised kind of thing. Uh, and then that's that's kind of like I say, I've only it's only just I think it was like round about the start of February that I, I created the channel. Uh, and then it's just went for there. Uh, got a lot on there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm enjoying it. Like uh, it's good, and I've I've seemed to be meeting all say like I've been in touch with you and I've been in touch with other folk just through it, and it it's been quite an interesting and positive like journey. And uh, like I thought at first, because it's a bit strange for like especially with I stay, if people start talking about visions and dreams and all that, people yeah. are just like. What, what's going on with you, kind of thing? Right. <laughs> That's how we all feel. Uh, aye. In fact, most people, most people have been positive about it. I've been quite surprised how like how positive it's all been, and people are kind of like saying good for you and like go for it and stuff, and uh, and that that's basically it. But. There's yeah. also the other, the other side of the channel is the, the kind of nature walks uh, and that and the meditation. So, because I was I was unsure to mix it all together, kind of thing. But it's, it's to me, it's all connected because it's all good. It's all relaxing. There's good stuff that I can or anybody else can meditate meditate to or like try and hear visions and. I've, sure. I'm lucky where I stay. I've got lots of nice places round about me and stuff, and it's it's good for my my mental health and stuff. So I've just kind of put it all together, uh, and it it gets me out and about and stuff. So there's that side to the channel as well. So uh, I saw those. I love them. They're beautiful. Some of those spots are are unbelievable. It's like a dream, honestly. I, I, I love it. I'm lucky in Scotland because this is all, obviously how it ties in as well. The weather's not been great, so I've not been able to do as much. But there's there's lots of like stone circles about here. There's lots of like kind of ancient places. So, uh, there's lots of history. So to me, that all kind of fits in and ties in with what I'm kind of talking about and dreaming about. And yeah, uh, so. I'm gonna keep it as, like just that, like I'm just gonna keep it like the three playlists: the meditation, the dreams, the visions, the theories, perfect, and the, the nature walks. That'll be like what I'm doing there. Perfect. Uh, and three is a good number. Aye. Well, that's the other crazy thing. I always the three six nine. That's how you'll see it at the end of my handle. The the dream keeper, the three six nine, uh, the key to the universe and stuff because. I'm going to do a video on that. I thought that was quite interesting. Well, like uh, three plus three is six. Six plus six is twelve. One plus two is three. Nine plus nine is eighteen. Right. One plus is nine. All that kind of. It's like Nikola Tesla was on about it and stuff. And yeah, uh, nine, nine is another. I mean, we could spend hours just talking about any one of those numbers individually. That's that's the crazy part. But there's something to for sure uh, and uh, man, the dream community online because I've only been doing this for about a year because uh, the, the dream keeper name I've always made music I, you know I'm a rapper so like that's what I always call myself dream keeper my initials are DK but uh, I've only been really reaching out to like the online dream community for about a year a little over a year now and there are so many great people out there and it, the, the feedback really has been great. The community's just cool. I haven't dealt with any nonsense, honestly. No trolls or nothing. Everyone's really, really cool. I, I've not really had... It's mostly, like, I had a few comments on my... The, what do you call them? The shorts. Getting mm -hmm. the shorts. But that goes to everybody kind right. of thing. And it's, right. it's like, I just kind of laugh at it because I'm not really bothered anyway, but... Apart from that, most of it, it's just all positive. Everybody's quite interested in it, and mm -hmm. uh, like people just enjoy watching it, kind of thing. And so I, I totally get what you're saying. Like it's, it seems like a good community. It is an interesting subject, and it's it's maybe one that, that people don't talk about enough. So they probably enjoy like people like me and you talking about it, and 
try to share it with people and yeah that, that's the other thing it's not definitely not oversaturated if anything it's it's a minority i think the the world needs more of this and and people need to think about and study dreams a lot more yeah you know dream practices should be a lot more common uh, so uh, i mean if you think about it it's, it's basically half your life or just under half your life you're sleeping or whatever again or like you're sleeping a lot of your life so it's quite a big part of your life and if you're yeah. sleeping dreaming so it's it's worth looking into and talking about and studying and just getting a discussion going about it because every like most people i'd say everybody's had a dream so everyone again i so everybody is something everybody can like get involved in because everybody's experienced it so sure. even like you, you say this you don't need to be some kind of expert or anything like that it's just you because it's all personal as well it's personal to like every individual kind of thing so yeah. just you yeah. explain what what you think kind of thing and yeah so it's like there's no there's no kind of what would you call it no kind of barriers for people to to get involved it's basically just sharing your experience right yeah the biggest issue i think is that most people just don't remember their dreams but uh, you know you can easily train anyone can learn to remember their dreams uh they say i know it's a very vast over generalization but based on if if someone sleeps eight hours every night and they lived for about 80 years i think it was if you do the math they spend that about six years of their life in in rem sleep you know rapid eye movement stage so right. everybody spends at least six years of their life you know give or take in that dream state now we also know that you dream outside of rem different types of dreams you know like you were saying when you first fall asleep there's no there's those uh hypnagogic dreams that you have and those are kind of different but it's it's dreams people dream when they're in deep sleep and they dream in REM so and most a lot of people spend more than eight hours sleeping sometimes and people spend years many years of their life dreaming is is my point you know uh, and it's all it's all time that you could be consciously exploring and learning and even if just having fun you know and you will learn in the process and you'll learn more about yourself yeah that is so to me it's fascinating like i've always thought about it and I've, I've you always come i've came up with like mad theories and stuff like it's obviously nobody knows but to me like uh, these are things that i can uh, uh, like thing we around my mind and think about like mm. what if like you're this like <clears throat> weird dream in the now then when you go to sleep, that's you waking up in the real world or the other world and doing things like that. Maybe it's yeah. true, maybe it's not, but it's it's fascinating just to think about it and just like just explore kind of these ideas because at the end of the day, it's consciousness, isn't it? So it's like you're it's a bit like what happens when you die, I suppose. Like you're like or what what it was like before you were born. That's what people say like what happens to to you when you die and you could say well the same thing that happened to you before you were born yeah. again it's like you're just like a, a consciousness that that's like forever kind of thing and when you're sleeping that could just be you switching on to a different part of it so it could all be real like we we call it dreams and say that it's not real but who's to say that it, again it's no again it's it's, that's what I like about it. It's fascinating. There's so much, right. and I don't think there's enough. Can of like I suppose there has been studies on it and that, but no, no, like to, to like a, like there's no like a solid conclusion. I wouldn't say, uh, and even like you say, just dreams. It could be like signs and stuff, giving you like premonitions or signs. Yeah like for right. for your awake life and stuff and uh, like there's just lots and lots to it yeah there, there's so many theories there's scientific theories there's esoteric theories there's philosophical theories and uh 
you know, there, there's the famous quote, and I've mentioned it before by the ancient Chinese philosopher. He said, you know, am I, what, am I a butterfly dreaming of being a man or was I a man dreaming of being a butterfly? You know, because he had a, a very vivid dream of being a butterfly in the field. And I think most people can agree to, or most people have experienced dreams that are hyper realistic. Like sometimes when you're in a vivid dream, it seems more real than this waking reality. And, yeah. You know, uh, and there's reasons for that, that, you know, because you're not limited just by all these physical senses. You know, you also, you have heightened senses in those dreams. You know, you can, you, you know, you have the power of the mind to absorb all of it. That's what makes it so hyper real. But uh, I'm curious, uh, how, how often do you lucid dream? And do you have any notable lucid dreams? And have you practiced becoming lucid in your dreams? No, I've not really. It's not something I've really practiced or that. And uh, it's really just kind of random now for me. I think because I'm no kind of practice in it, it's just like some some nights I'll just have like normal dreams or what I would call normal dreams, just mm -hmm. all kind of random. Other nights, like profound dreams. But I've never really looked into how to how to do it again, how to like uh, have like lucid dreams or how to train yourself to have them. Uh... You're, you're definitely connected enough and you're involved enough to where you would be able to, like you said, flip, like it flipped the switch in you. You can flip, you'll be able to flip that switch. And once you do, you're going to be, I think you're going to be really gifted with that. And there's lots of simple techniques. Every, you know, different things work for different people, but, uh, you know, I'll be making videos about that, and I'll definitely, and, you know, you can look it up, and I'll be sharing links about that. There's lots of ways to make yourself become lucid, and uh, I think you would you would definitely enjoy that, for sure. Aye. Uh, it's, uh, it's definitely something I'm, I'm going to look into and, and uh, like, practice, I suppose, eh, or, or hone in my kind of skills, skills on it or that. And, I think uh, it'll come naturally for you. I mean, yeah, work on it a little bit, and I think don't think you'll have any issues. Aye, aye, because the, the dreams that I have had that, that are uh, like that I've made videos about the, the ones that really stood out. They're, they're quite like symbolic and prophetic kind of thing. Like it's not just like your usual. I mean, like there was the, the girl with the blue hair. There was the the eagle. It was like a, a big eagle swooping down and it had like feathers, white feathers in its like claws and it was like giving us them. Uh, um, and then there's one I'm going to do. It was a dream I had last week. It was like uh, like a big mass of bull and it was like protecting like a white horse and a, like the horse's uh, foal, like the, the baby horse kind of thing. Right, right okay. That's quite... It's unusual because it's no stuff that I would really think about or anything like that in general. Right. And it's symbolic when you, when even just saying them, like the eagle with the white feathers and the, the white horses and the bull, and it's quite profound stuff. So it's like it obviously means something because it like I don't think I've ever seen a white horse in, in real life of that. So it's no right. there's, no, there's horses all running about here and that's why it's on my mind like I've never even thought about it or anything else eh? so it's it's definitely something something I would like to if I if I could have more of them I'd be right. quite interested to to see where it took me like yeah there's a there's also techniques to recreate dreams you know to create reoccurring dreams to try to enter back into dreams that you had previously I've, to I've done that before as well like, yeah. like it's almost like having a, a dream, and then like where it ends, and you can go back in and continue on. Like it's not like the next night, but it could sometimes be months later, and then yeah. once you're back into it, like you can remember straight away that oh, I, that was this dream, and this is what's happening now, which is pretty cool. Right? Have you had dreams? Where in, in that life, in that dream, you had memories of your life in that dream? I'm curious, because I, I 
have. I've talked about it in past videos. I felt like I lived a, almost a whole lifetime in my dream. You know, I had memories and connections with people. I would say that, like, I have, but it's no ones that is, I can remember. Right. Can it, it's like, remember when I'm having the dream, but it's no ones that I can Right. Remember. No, I know what you mean. Me too. I don't recall my memories from that dream, but I, I remember when I was in it, I had the memories of my past life. You know, I, I, I feel like, I, yeah, but yeah, same here. I don't specifically remember. I didn't carry those memories over with me, but I know I had memories, you uh, know, at that time. It sounds the same then. So it's like when you're in the dream, you feel like you like, a bit like you're now, like I'm here and I know like what happened before and like in this life, it's just the same but in a dream and obviously it's a different setting but you, f you know that there's a past and right. memory right. stuff and uh, so I totally understand what you're saying now, it's, it's hard to explain. It is. When you wake up, it's not like you can remember all the memories but when you're in the dream, like it feels like familiar and you've got the memories and, and that kind of thing so I would say like I have not like again not in every dream or, or anything uh, I think that was another reason for me breaking up the channel we we talking about interest and stuff and uh, the, the, the other videos because like I don't hear these dreams every night right. so like I couldn't uh, I wouldn't hear enough stuff just to make stuff about dreams kind of thing. But uh, it does, to be fair, it does seem to be happening more and more recently. But, uh, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, like I say, I didn't hear them every night, so. Uh, yeah, me too, man. The more, the more you focus on it, the, the more prominent it becomes, you know. Pretty crazy, actually. I, wow. Do you, so, uh, do you keep a dream journal? Eh, uh, I, I do, it's like, it's not really a, well, I suppose it is a dream journal, but it's just like a notepad, and right. I basically just write, like, I, I basically sum up the dream in, like, a, a title, I suppose, a few words. Okay. And then, by that, that allows me to remember, because, like, you'd probably be the same, like, eh, uh, like if if I wake up straight away, most most times, like sometimes I can't remember anything, but a lot of the time I can remember. And if I write so, like something down, then I'll always remember what most of the dream was about. But if I don't, then I'll probably forget it within an hour. So right. I, I don't need going to like lots of details. I just need like a a few kind of keywords, and then that will let me remember like the, the just yeah. I get that yeah you can put the title and it can bring the dream back Aye. But, uh, but I would recommend man getting as much detail as you can only because and, and you know and I, I, I talked to someone like Justin Anthony he might even be watching right now uh, he I interviewed him before and he said he doesn't write his dreams down at all because the important ones that stick out to him, he'll never forget, you know? Uh, and, uh, and I get that too, but still, uh, I, I learned from going through my old dream journals from years ago. I, you know, I got years and years of these dreams built up. Sometimes the ones where I did go into more detail, I, I surprised myself, you know? I'm, and uh, there's been times where I had like deja vu. I had deja vu in the kitchen and I explained it in great detail. The only reason that I knew that it was a dream was because I, I was reading over my dream journal. And I was able to bring that dream journal into the person that I was working with at the time, you know, and I'm like, you know, I was like, I had deja vu, but this is something I had a dream about and I could prove it, you know, I brought my dream journal in and I was in like all the details were there. You know, like he, that person that was in the deja vu experience, I didn't know that person when I had the dream and I had it written down and dated, but he was in the dream standing at the sink doing the dishes. And, and oh, sure. So I'm just throwing that out there, you know, because uh, I deja vu quite a lot as well. Uh, 
but I've, I've obviously never thing we it into a dream, which is that's really interesting. That like you've you've obviously basically you've if I'm understanding right, you've had a dream like like yeah. years ago or whatever a while ago. Yeah, and then like then you've had deja vu, and then that's actually been the dream you've had. So you you basically like you've dreamt the future kind of thing. I suppose is that yeah premonition or uh, pre cognitive. They call it precognitive dreaming. Right. No, uh, no, that's that's really cool. Really interesting that. Uh, so I, uh, you're you're right. Like it probably is worth writing all this down as much detail as I can. There's no, it, like there's there's like there's no doubts about it. Kind of thing. The more details, the better. It's it's obviously just why them you either forget or you you don't do it. And like you you know it's like you take it up and get on with with life. Kind of thing, so you don't yeah. really do it, but it's definitely it is the way forward. Because if you've got that, like you say, then you can look back on it as well and stuff. And uh, I suppose that's why, in a way, what I'm doing with the videos too, because I'm talking, and then I can look back and I'll be able to see like the journey kind of thing, and if it's all connected or if it's just random kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, Patterns, yeah. Because uh, I think that is that. Like, if you've been doing it for like a while, I don't know if you've been able to see any kind of patterns or anything. But it's, big time, uh, aye. So it's it's definitely interesting to, because that's what it's about. It's, like that's what the journey is about. Trying to stitch it all together and work it out and and see what it means. So to, to do that, you do need to document it in some kind of way. Uh, right. Totally agree with you. Like, yeah, your videos are great for that, honestly. And when I first started my doing my dream sessions, it, it was literally one of the first few episodes. I mentioned that I said maybe if I if I read my dreams out here on video, it'll be another way to to document it. Now I haven't done that, but you know, no. honestly, you're doing it, and uh, I mean, you're you're killing it. So uh, like that, it's amazing and i'm curious to see and then other people can study the patterns in your dreams too not just you you know you yeah. know there's someone i have on here uh chelsea chelsea turpin and coxie she she's a dream analyst coach oh. and uh i'm definitely gonna like you you gotta check her stuff out you're gonna like it but she says how every dream is just one small piece of a puzzle and in order to put the puzzle together you kind of need to have a collective body of dreams to get a, a more broad understanding of what they're trying to tell you or whatever, you know, just to get a broad understanding of it, you know? Uh, so you're right. You, there's something to that. I know that's, I suppose you could look at like a jigsaw and uh, what we're doing is we're just collecting each piece as we go along and then at the, at the end of it, or if there is an end of it or that, then you'll hear enough pieces to make a picture kind of thing. So I totally understand what she's saying. Uh, totally get that. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, the way you're going about it, even with the videos, is really cool. <clears throat> um, I have, I'm, I'm, I've been bad with keeping up with the comments, so hello to everyone, and I'm sorry. <laughs> so sometimes I get in the conversation and, and uh, it's tough for me to see the comments anyway. So, oh, it's not, I'm not used. This is the first live kind of thing I've done ever. So mm -hmm. it's on you and me. So I'm just been running, rolling with it. It's, you know, if you've, you've watched the videos, I just kind of wing it and just go go with whatever's happening. So I love it. Uh, but hi, everybody. Well, I don't think I even say hi to anybody or that. Uh, okay. We'll get most of the views in the replays in the, in the next few days and weeks anyway. And uh, but, but this is great. And I'm going to get a better program to go live on multiple platforms, and we can even go live on YouTube. You know, uh, we'll, we'll do it. I just This is where my community is at at the moment, and this is where they expect it. And... You know, I kind of built this momentum, so I don't want to lose this. No, I do. I'm. I look towards better.
better stuff for the future, for sure. This thing with anyway, with the YouTube, uh, like, also I've, I've never, like, I've watched it, but I've never even had an account or anything until the Dreamkeeper account. Mm. Uh, so it's on you to me as well, but the, the live, like, I can go, like, live, but on, like, my laptop. I can't do it on my phone. I think you need to be on it for three months before you can do it on your phone. But okay. the, the video is no great. I'd, like, I did a live video, but the quality was not great and all that anyway. So I'm not in any kind of rush to, to, to do anything like that anyway again. But uh, obviously with your community, I totally get that. Like I, I did the same with my Timberpunk. I had like a Facebook page. Well, I still have a Facebook page and an Instagram Mm -hmm. And I've put years and years and years into that. I've been doing that since like 2018. So it's like you don't want to lose all that. But it's, it's always found that with Timberpunk. Because like I, I had Facebook for years, that's what I did. I, I made it on. Okay. Then they brought it to Instagram. Then they brought it uh, like, I don't know, TikTok. And it's right. like to me it's too much when you start jumping around all, and you have to post everything and all these different things and I just it takes the fun out of it kind of thing whereas mm -hmm. like what you're saying you've got your your Facebook page you've got your community you're just doing it on the one thing everybody's there and people are seeing it and enjoying it so I, I totally get what you're saying yeah. hopefully see what I'm like on YouTube that's how like I, I set up the YouTube page I've made an Instagram, but I'm fed up with it already because <laughs> yeah. I can't be bothered posting things on YouTube and then doing it on Instagram and again. So I'm just like, I'll just stick with uh, YouTube and that's what I'll do, kind of thing, because that's the video platform anyway. So that's what it's working for me. So that's where I'll be, kind of thing. But yeah. I'm happy to come on again as well on like this. It's uh, worked all right. It looks good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, and YouTube's the best for monetization too. They they treat their creators the best too, so that's uh, so a good one. That's <clears throat> but that's like another part of my goal with it is is to get it monetized. Like I, I know it could take a, like a few years or whatever to build that up, but that's yeah. that's the goal because I'd love just to talk about the stuff and share it with people and. Obviously, if I could get paid for doing that, then that's that's the goal kind of thing. Uh, Same thing. Aye. Uh, so, it is, it's, it's, to me, it's just it's a good way because you're, you're providing content and that, and it's interesting for people, and people are enjoying it. And yeah. So, it works for everybody, basically. Everybody's getting something out of it, and... Uh, that that would be my goal, but like I say, it could take years. I don't know, but the the channel went like I say, it's it's only really been just over a month, and it's I've went to like nothing basically because even a lot of people I know, it's not like they've all subscribed because a lot of people are not bothered about it kind of thing. Like they encourage me and go for it, but they don't know why to sit and watch it every week or whatever. So you'll be the same. Yeah. Yeah. So it's went from zero to like 90 just over a month and then again so like I'll just keep building on it and stuff eh? Yeah. Just in yeah, as well, just build it up and keep going eh? That's the, that's the goal. You can't go wrong with it, you know. No. Yeah, you can't go wrong. It's, it's good. It's good in every way. So uh, someone has a question. Didi, uh, she asked, do you do you have dreams of past lives, or do you have flashes of the past while being awake? And how do you know they're dreams of past lives? When it happened to her, she was wide awake. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really sure about dreams of past lives so or that. Uh, <clears throat> it's, like I say, I've had dreams where it's almost like, like a, a different life, where it's like, like, like what we were saying earlier, like you, it's like uh, no, like a recurring dream, but it's like a, the same. The I don't know. It'd be like in the real life where 
like this is happening, but I can remember what happened last week, and I'd, like then stuff will happen in the future. Mm-hmm. So it's like that in a dream. So it's not really like a past life. It's almost like a different life. Uh, mm-hmm. And there was one where the, I, I met somebody in my dream, and then met them in real life. Like I didn't know who it was at the time, and then I've met them in my real life. Like it was a few years later. So, mm-hmm. but I've not really dreamt to like, I, it's hard to say because I've never wrote them down, but I, I'm not really sure. I, I couldn't say that I have, to be to be honest, is, is what I'd need to answer. Yeah, I, I've had dreams of being in bodies that were in the past. I never personally felt like, oh, this is me in a past life. I always felt like, you know, like I, I've dreamed of, of, of being alive during the Native American times and stuff like, and maybe I, and I personally never felt like it was a past life, but I just didn't look at it that way. I felt like I was tuning into something that may have previously happened. But uh, uh, Elaine said, I dream of myself as my younger self every day. That's very, very common. Actually, when I asked people to look in the mirror in their dreams, I did a little experiment online and had a bunch of people that claim that they lucid dream I ask them to look into mirrors when they're dreaming and one of the most common things that people saw in their dreams were was a younger version of themselves I thought that was interesting all right no, I, no, that was pretty interesting it makes, makes sense because you spent you know you we, we all kind of get an image of ourselves, you know, and if that's the image that, that you hold of yourself mostly subconsciously, that might be the image that keeps coming back to you. I don't know. I don't think I've ever looked in a mirror in a dream. Try it. Yeah, I'm going to keep that in my mind because I think that would be pretty interesting yeah, to, to see because that's a reflection of yourself in the dream. So I think that would be pretty interesting to they happen in a dream because uh, yeah. I've always experienced that kind of differently. Like, like it's almost that like I'm above and I can see myself, but, but it's, okay. like, it's like you're. But it's it's, hard, it's strange because it's like I know that's me and I'm seeing it through like me through my eyes, but I can also feel like I'm detached as well and viewing everything. Right. Uh, Okay, so I have to ask because I'm curious, and if you have time, and whenever you're ready, I know it's very late for you, so, you, you know, you let, just let me know, man. I respect your time very much, and I hope to get you on more in the future. But because these, these things, I could talk for days about this. But I want to know, so when you were doing that, do you feel like you were having an out-of-body experience? And if so, do you think there's a difference between – an out-of-body experience or astral projection and lucid dreaming. How do you feel about all that? I don't... What would you... Like, I know what an out-of-body experience is. What would you... How would you describe the other two? Astral projection is a type of -of out-of-body experience, and what they believe is that your astral body... Or you could call it like your spirit, or you know the the uh, the lighter version of you. They believe that that separates from the physical body and enters into the astral realm. And the astral realm, from what they say, is just a, a one vibration mm-hmm. higher than this physical world, just outside of our perception. And it's where a lot of other esoteric things go on. And uh, and they say you're you know you're attached to your body and there actually goes really deep. But basically, an astral astrally projecting is projecting your astral body outside of yourself, and people vibrate to a high enough frequency to where they can turn around and see themselves. Right. So what, that's what they say, at least. So, I would I would say that as well. I I would say, I yeah, because like like I say, it's it's almost like. It can be both at the same time, which is quite strange. So it's like I can see what I'm seeing, like as I'm already now looking at you, but I can, I'm also above looking at me and looking at everything. So it's like a se- it's like a separation, but it's happening at the same time. So it's like being in t- 
two places at once kind of thing at the same time. It's, it's quite a strange experience, but it, it happens quite a lot in like my dreams. So it's again, it's like a normal feeling. It, it doesn't feel unusual when it's happening. It's it's like you're basically going to two places at the same time. I suppose. It's yeah. Like, I would say, but yeah. Yeah, quantum theory definitely supports the possibility of that. Uh, I will, just as I was saying that, that, I was thinking about that, it's like the, is it neutrons that can be in two places at the same time and lots, stuff? And, lots of subatomic particles, yeah, they call it superposition. Uh, and uh, yes, they're in, in every possible position they can be in all at the same time. And, and then, then it, somebody's viewing them as well, I think. Right, right. I can't remember exactly, but the the act one way if you're looking at them, and then they'll act a completely different way if you're not looking at them. And, yeah. Exactly. To me, it could all be tied in because we're all made of the same stuff. Right. So. Right. Yeah. So, right. The observer. They call that the observer effect. Uh, aye. Yeah. 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 You're right. You're right about all that. And yes, exactly. So. Maybe when they're the observer effect that happens when you're looking at these subatomic particles, maybe it's so measurable and observable because they're so tiny and the influence of your observation and intention and your mind and your energy might be easy, easy to notice on subatomic particles. And it might take a little more intention and a little more focus and a little more influence to change things that are bigger, you know, more visible to the naked eye, but it doesn't mean that the observer effect isn't happening on a macro level, you know? Aye. That's, that's definitely something that you could you could go into deep with that. Like, it, it, the possibilities are endless with that. But I love stuff like that a day. But, uh, so, so I would say of outer body and that, that's what I would say. It's like I say, you don't really like think about that at the time, but I suppose like describing it, that's what it would be, like a bit of both. Yeah. Right. But I've never, I agree. I've never, just what you were saying, like about uh, past lives and stuff, like in a different time, mm -hmm. like you were a different time, like you were on about, like, and like, it, like, what was it, like, uh, back in history, can I? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. I don't think I've ever had a dream like that. Yeah, it's always been like familiar settings. I couldn't say it was right here and now, but it's always been familiar. It's not been something that was that was vastly different or noticeable that I could say, "Oh, that was back in like the eighteen hundreds or or anything like that." Have you yeah. had dreams that took place in more abstract places, maybe not different times, but uh, not so earthly like places or no? Yeah. I'm just kidding. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't, nothing's coming to mind. Okay. Me, me neither, not without intentionally doing it like lucidly. But uh, uh, Dee Dee, yeah, because she had a dream about herself in the past and she also, she was laying in a coffin and she was looking at herself from the outside down in a coffin. Right. And um, she had dreams about, like, during the crusade times, I believe, and all types of interesting things, usually revolving around death. I've but, seen that. I, I have, that's come, just seen that about the crusades, like nights and stuff. is definitely something that's, that's coming to my mind. Mm. Like, I couldn't say this is what was happening or that, but I think that I've maybe had a dream about being in that time. Uh, now, she said, or have, have you seen, like, flashes of it while awake? Uh, Sometimes just thinking about these things, do you feel like you can connect with that in any way? I'm not, again, I've never really tried that or, or that. Like, if I'm awake and I'm, like, the now, like, I can sit right now and just kind of, if I just, like, put my eyes down, I can see that, that dream that was on about with the bull and the white horses. I can see it mm -hmm. in my mind. 
but it's it's not like I can see it in front of me, but I, I sort of like can. It's not like I can see it right in front of me, but it is like I can see it just by thinking about it. Yeah. That's that's how kind of vivid that one was. So I don't know if that's like a flash here or that because I can do it like on call yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Like, there's, a science, there's a scientific term for that. I believe that one's called hyperphantasia, where you're able to vividly visualize things. Now, there's a difference between that and hallucination. Prophantasia, people can halluc like literally see things right in front of them when they visualize. But most people who can just get that vivid picture like you're talking about, I think it's called hyperphantasia, they call it. Right. You're gifted. You're very gifted in, in that. Some people can't do that. Uh, it's just kind of normal to me, eh? Right. It's just obviously just what I've had, like I say, it just been like that, eh? It's, eh, it's just like, like I say, I, should, I wish I'd looked into this years ago. But I don't know if I had to, like, I don't know if now is just the, the right time to do it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Divine timing. Uh, aye. Dee Dee said she saw it like a movie being wide awake. Yeah. So that's maybe what, what you're kind of saying where it's like, it's actually... Like in front of the eye. Yeah, man. And it's, it's yeah. interesting, to, like she was on about the coughing and stuff. I have heard the people, like, yeah, uh, I think it was like, like well, I, no, because why would it be in a coffin? I don't know why that's coming to my mind, but I've, I have heard the people, like, mm -hmm. seeing themselves in a coffin for above. Mm -hmm. But then they've also been alive to speak about it, kind of thing. So I, I, I don't know why that's coming to my mind. But I did hear a story about the the person they thought was dead, and they put them in a coffin, and then mm. they woke up in the coffin at, at the funeral, kind of thing. Right. Brightens the life out of me, stuff like that. Cause yeah. I do that. But uh, I don't know if it was that, but that has come to mind. I've I've heard stories definitely about that with people. No, no, it was near the coffin. That's what it was. It was uh, it was near death experiences, and it was a guy. He was in the hospital and uh, the hospital bed, and he also died on the bed. And he he's came out with, like his body, and he says he was looking down and. Then I think he was trying to speak to his wife and try to speak to the nurse, right. and nobody was interacting with him and stuff. And uh, but he had died, but then obviously they brought him back to life. So like, right. that, that, that is said to have. I mean, there's I've heard of that happening a few times, and that, like what they say is they come back and they tell the people like what the conversations that they they were having, and they explain what happened in that room while they were supposed to be flatlined, you know? Yeah. And that's how people say, and there, there's, I'm sure there's, there may be something to that. My idea is that, and you know, I had an interview with uh, a guy named Theo on here once, and he talked about an out of body experience he had. I think it was when he like hit his head and got a concussion or something. Oh, and, uh, and it's cool and it's interesting and it's, it, there's definitely could be something to it, but, you can't rule out the possibility of their brain, you know, possibly like hearing what's going on at a distant level and putting these pictures together as hallucinations in their mind too, you know. I as 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 it's hard to to come to a conclusion one way or another, and yeah. basically nobody really knows unless you have that experience, kind of thing, and. And even then, like you say, you maybe think it was real, a bit like dreaming. You maybe think it's real, but maybe it's no. It's maybe yeah. just your, your consciousness or your memories just all getting jumbled up. And that's, that's how I think it's fascinating. I think more studies need to be done into all these kind of things because to me, it is all linked to like consciousness kind of thing, yeah. where it's like near death experiences or dreaming. Uh, and, and all that kind of thing. To me, it's all kind of linked to consciousness 
and that is one thing I think about consciousness is that like I say, like what I was saying earlier is that when I go to sleep that could be me waking up and when I'm waking up that's me going to sleep kind of thing it's, and if, if you've got the, like you could go into a lot of different ways with the what do they call that, that the the multiverse no the multiverse the, the, all the different universes is, I think it is the multiverse so it's like you're going to sleep in that universe and waking up in this one and and you're thinking it's a dream, but again, it could all be reality. And it's like you could go on and on and on, yeah. like about this kind of face. Um, right. And to me, to me if it, this is what I like about this day. To me, even if it is just all nonsense, like it's no, like it's no true, it's no real, but it's, it's so fascinating just to even talk about it and think about it and explore it, kind of thing. That's that's what I love about it the most. I agree. Me too, honestly. Like even the even the the hard the hard science behind it. Even if you just stick with that route, that's fascinating uh, enough and beneficial. So even if you you think that they're just our synapses firing off, you know, there's there's a lot of great solid scientific theories that make perfect sense that I think are valid and valuable to people, you know. Yeah. So, but. At the same time, I also agree that there's there's a lot of metaphysics behind it, and to ignore that, and or at least to ignore the possibility of that, is irrational because it does delve into something that it has yet to be explored. You know, people talk about the new frontier being space, you know, outer space, or or you know, we haven't explored enough of the ocean yet. We haven't explored our dream realms enough. No, at all. Infinite. Infinite. Humanity's uh, like famous for that. Like we we just write things off. Like oh, we we know about that. Like the like you're saying, notion and stuff. We don't know nothing about the ocean. We don't know nothing about the mind. Right. Like the, the consciousness. That I think that's how they struggle with like AI. Like everybody's saying, oh, well, like when will AI be conscious and all that? We don't even know if we're conscious. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah, I know what we, this is. I. It's this. It's. But people just write it off like it's all been solved and all looked in. Uh, I've made a few videos of, about the ocean and that they came from the sea. And so I was saying aliens could be. They're no aliens. They just live in the ocean or uh, or different things like and even mm-hmm. like your dreaming and your mind. There's all the kind of like the uh, like the psychics and all that kind of stuff. If if that's all real, if that's true, that you can remote view, because that's what I thought I was doing to start with. Because like I could see people and stuff, and I'm thinking, what's this? Yeah, so I don't know. If it's like remote viewing, or I don't know if it's a vision or, or that. But there's yeah. lots there. People just write off. But to me, it's I don't think you can write it off. I think there's stuff. To it, kind of thing. Was... I agree. You know, <clears throat> everything that I believe in does say that all of those things are very possible, not just possible, but likely. But when I was first really getting into lucid dreaming, actually, after I got a little bit experienced with it, I used to want to test some of these things when I got interested in astral projection and out-of-body experiences, I, I read a book called Astral Projection and the Nature of Reality, and I'll recommend it to anyone because it's really amazing. But uh, so I would practice. I was convinced that I was having these out-of-body experiences or potentially remote viewing because I was able to zoom over the town into my friends, into people's houses and look and see. And I, I would come and I told my friends, like, I, I'm going to, I'm going to come over, I'm going to go over to your house and look into your bedroom and I want you to leave something out on your nightstand and I'm going to tell you tomorrow what you left out, you know, because I was convinced that I was having these out of body experiences and after trying it multiple times, because it's, I wasn't always able to instantly do it that night. Sometimes it would take me quite a few attempts, weeks sometimes, but 
when I finally successfully did it with different people, uh, I never got it right. I got to be honest. There was one where it was pretty close where you could kind of, you know, I talked about how he had a, a paper and like, he's like, yeah, there was a book there and it kind of looked like a piece of paper by itself. And I'm like, all right, we're kind of stretching that one. Uh, Other than that, it was wrong. The one dude was like, I don't even have a nightstand. So I'm like, all right, well, you know, I was like, what am I even doing here? Uh, I was, as far as my experience goes, I was convinced that it was an out of body experience, but I may have just been, been having a very, very vivid, lucid dream, you know, uh, because I know how astral projection and out of body experiences are described. I was probably creating that experience, but yeah. that doesn't mean that they're not wrong. And it doesn't mean that I wasn't witnessing a different reality that might have been an actual reality that could have been slightly shifted from this one. Like, yeah. Just saying, you know, it's all possible. Uh, it's hard to, it's hard to, like you say, unless you were right, unless you were right constantly, then you could say, yeah. right, there is something to that. If you were right maybe once or twice, it could be like a lucky guess kind of thing. Exactly. So it's consistent, and that, that's why the reasons why, because I've had some work in it stuff, but I've never had it that, like, consistent or anything that I could say, right, that's what I was doing. I was remote viewing. I was doing this. I was doing. So, to me, like you get people that say that they can, but to me, a lot of them, they just make that many guesses that they were going to be right on some of them. So it's I, I can't say one or the other kind of thing. To me, I think honestly, personally, I feel like ninety nine point nine percent of the time it's probably chance, but. It doesn't mean that some people can't tune into something real sometimes. I, but I wouldn't rule it out 100%, like, definitely no. There's, there's, I'd imagine there is, there's some of the stuff I've seen over the years and they, 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 they get a lot of stuff right and really specific stuff that you, you would think, how would they know that? So there, I think right. something to it, but I've just no seen enough or experienced anything like that where I could say 100% that me neither. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out kind of thing to me I don't rule out much these days like even like with the alien thing everybody laughed at people for that for years and now there's videos of them all flying about and stuff so it's right. like, it's right. like and you, you can't you can't write stuff off like till you know for a hundred percent that it's not true. Yeah, it's weird because it takes time for things to shift into our uh, understanding. I think enough to become a part of our reality. I think by the time we we're one hundred percent sure about the aliens, it's not going to be as big of a shock as it would have been back in the forties, fifties, sixties. Uh, you know because. Even when I was a kid, I, we saw we saw like th these lights in the sky that were unexplainable at the time. Now I think back, and they were pretty obviously just drones. But back when I was a kid, we didn't people didn't have drones. That wasn't really a. But I'm sure they existed. So I, I'm just saying, like now drones are so popular. So like whatever you know, and, and like life and, and subspecies and, and things like that. I, I think by the time they become part, part of our reality, I think it's not going to be as drastic of an effect. I don't know. Or that by the time they become widely accepted, I should say. Aye. Aye, to me, I say I'm not sure. There's people can body like dreaming and like psychic and so it is all connected that's why I talk about them in, in my videos and stuff because people say that you can like that he's an American that guy the can't even mind his name now he's like a doctor or something but he does all the meditations out in the desert and he says like you, you basically meditate and the, like the, the lights appear and all that I, I don't know if he's a fake or <coughs> he seems to be everywhere is it Dr. Greer uh, Dr. Greer <laughs> Uh, Say it again? Dr. Greer. Like, is it Richard? Greer? Yeah. I'm not sure. He's, he's all, he was on everything at one point. Uh, it does that. Is it C, C E 5 
It's like a, he's designed some kind of meditation. To me, I, I look at him, I don't know. Like he's, he's on all these different programmes. Okay. I don't know, I don't get a good feeling about him. I don't know if he's just like a con man or, or that. Yeah. He seems to be on everything and he's, he's, he takes people out to the desert and then they all like do a group meditation and the lights appear in the sky and all that kind of thing. Right, right. Uh, right. It's not just time, as like it was on about, there's, there's people just like normal people and they seem to have like a connection, like a, a mental connection mm-hmm. with like, it's not like aliens, but it's the lights. So like they, they could go into their garden and they just like make like a, a, a connection to them with their mind and then they'll appear and they're, like, it's not like stars are moving about and stuff and they can't be explained. So, I think with the, the aliens or whatever, there is, it is like a, a connection, like like through like your mind and through dreams and stuff as well. Right. So that right. I, I talk about them as well because I, I do think it's more maybe like we we speak a lot. They, then maybe it's more like a, 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 a kind of I basically through your mind anything right. so. As it's fascinating and it's interesting and uh, definitely some going on with that. But like I say, like you know, you can't trust everybody or believe everybody, like everything. Uh, so yeah. I reckon time will tell. I reckon we'll find out in our lifetimes anyway if there's something to it or if there's no. So I agree. I agree. Um, I saw your I saw your one video where you were mentioning something about the war between Mars and Venus and how humanity was likely populated by Martians and and people escaping. Uh, there there is some really great videos about that. Especially there's a there's a YouTube channel called Spirit Science. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they uh they have an entire uh, like a, a two hour long video called. Uh, the complete history of humans or something. Right. And they talk a lot about that. And they got a lot of their information from um, Zacharias Sitchin. And I'm not sure if you've ever heard of him, but he was on that. Uh, he's referenced a lot in that Ancient Aliens show, the one that was on TV. But he's not on that show personally. He doesn't like to be affiliated with those guys, but they quote him all the time because he is a... Uh, He's an etymologist and a Sumerian transcriber, and he's he's actually translated a lot of the ancient tablets himself. Uh, he wrote a great book called um, called uh, uh, "There Were Giants Upon the Earth in Those Days and in These Days Too." That's the name of the book. Uh, and uh, he's not he's not the most creative, but he's a very 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 analytical writer, and he came up with this whole theory about uh, the extra planet and Nibiru. And he talks a lot, a lot about the war on Mars and how they potentially, how a lot of the ancient stories talk about uh, the Martians destroying their atmosphere and they come here and that's where Atlantis and, and you get into all that and the pyramids and all that. So uh, I remember when you were saying it in your video, you were like, I think in the beginning you said something like you saw it somewhere and you're not sure like how much truth there is to it. And I just want to tell you that there's a lot of truth to what you were saying. Yeah. From from what you were saying. I always always thought that that specific story about like I've, I've heard stories about Mars and stuff and us coming from Mars, but the specific story with Mars and Venus yeah. being at war, I always thought it was like a Greek myth, and I'm still con- I'm still pretty convinced that's where I first heard that because I, right. I spoke about it like many years ago kind of thing. Right. I was telling people about it, but the, the Anunnaki and all that, I actually, yeah. I, I'd love to write a book, but I've, I don't really read books that much or that, so I wouldn't even know how to write a book, uh, or it would make a really good movie, and I'm going to make a video about it, and it'll be called The, the Second Sun, and it's about the, the second sun in the solar system with the... Like Nibiru and that, and right. the, the orbit and stuff, and it's about like the second sun returning, right. and obviously like 
hero has gone round that. So, uh, like, because of that story, that's why my favourites. Like, it, it's, it fascinates me. I just love it, the, and I'm convinced that that is the actual cre- creation of humanity. I don't think it's a story. I think that's actual creation of how we were created with Anunnaki. Like, because it's even like Genesis, like the like the modifying your genetics and stuff to be like a slave base and to to like mine gold and and then like uh, obviously like we've got a fascination with gold and stuff mm-hmm. but, uh, and there's just so much to it like it's just I love it kind of thing it's why my my favourites so uh, like mm-hmm. I love I do about that uh, I've been saving it it was going to be one of the first ones but I've been saving it to look the video is better quality and stuff because I was like, I'm not wanting to make a mess of that. Like, I want that to be a really good one because it's something I'm really passionate about. Mm-hmm. So I'm totally with you on that. Like, I love love that. Uh, it's just, that is, it's just so, it would make a really good movie. You think all oh, the rubbish mm-hmm. to make these days, that would make, that would be a blockbuster movie. Right. And then, there's so much mythology surrounding it, and it ties in with so much other mythology that came along. They could make sequel uh, upon sequel upon sequel. Like, what are these Hollywood writers doing? Uh, I, and to me, it's uh, although even if you've never heard the story, it's almost like the Bible. It's like you don't need to read the Bible, but you, everybody knows about the Bible, kind of thing. And with mm-hmm. that, it's a similar. You might, you might be even never heard nothing about it, but as soon as somebody starts telling you the story, it all sounds and feels familiar. So it's like mm-hmm. it draws you in, kind of thing. So mm-hmm. it would be good to to see that. And that's how I wanted to write a book kind of, about it, but I wouldn't even know where to start with that, eh, to be honest. So I'll just make a video. <laughs> And that's you know that's that's your uh, medium that's your your mode of of expression definitely i think lean into that for sure i uh, yeah thank you dd for answering carly yes sister he's from scotland and uh check out his youtube videos videos uh because he has videos of him walking through some of the forests and out in nature in Scotland, and you can see where he's from, and it is absolutely mind blowing. So I'm gonna share a link to your YouTube in the comments, actually, for people to check out after this. Yeah. So and then I, you know, I also must throw it out there that there is like the the vaguely scientific explanation of um, the elements that helped create human life may have come from those other planets and that might be the metaphor for it just throwing that out there because i have yeah. To, have to. Uh, yeah but i i think there's something to that too and then also um you were talking about the pyramids places where an- ancient men have built the pyramids around the world i'm sorry to dig so much into this with you no. but Right. Uh, you talked about how you felt like there were certain there were energy points for the world or something. I think you described yeah. them as. I've heard some people will explain uh, the pyramids as being located on some of the the their their portals to the Earth's chakra system, and they they relate the flow of the the toroidal flow because we know that the electromagnetic energy of the Earth flows in a toroidal direction which is circular kind of like this you know and um it, it at the center would be like a vortex almost like a donut you know that's that's the toroidal flow of energy and going down the center of what that donut would be they believe there's certain energy points from these pyramids um yeah, yeah so, so like dude the thing that just blows me away is just and obviously you're you're like you're educated but you're you're so intuitive like it's it's pretty crazy it's pretty wild that you you i mean what's the like how often do you read do you do you read a lot or do you just kind of 
No, I don't really like read at all. Uh, like Please. I never really read, read like read books at, when I was at school and stuff. And then you read stuff in general, like newspapers and Facebook or whatever. But I've never really sat and read book after book or anything. Do, uh, you got a strong intuition, man. Do you do you have like gut feelings often that turn out to be true? I no, I'm pretty. Uh, but I, I, I guess it's hard to explain. I'm curious. But I'm, I'm, always seem to be like no about dreams or anything, but just in life, always seem to be like one or two steps ahead to, to what's what's going to happen or what's going on. It's like like the in, intuition or gut feeling. It's like I can. It's like a sense. And I'm like, I won't even know that I'm doing it half the time. I'll just say, like, I'll just, whatever it is, and I'll be like, I need to do this, I need to focus on this, do that. And then I'm halfway down that road, and then something will happen, and everybody's like, we we need to go down that road as well. And I'm like, well, I'm already, can I help you along? I'm already gone there, kind of thing. Yeah, it's yeah. been like that. I, it's, I always kind of thought, like, kind of sensitive to, like, my environment kind of thing. Like, uh, like I can just kind of soak things up just with my environment and understand what, what the kind of set up is, what's going on. and uh, so. Okay, so I'm curious. Dream with me for a minute about what you think the future could look like for the work that you're doing and uh, what what the future of humanity could look like if stuff like this starts to take off because i know other people that are doing other dream work in different ways what if you, you know like how uh, we had the industrial revolution and i talk i've mentioned this quite a few times in my past videos you know maybe when we had that industrial revolution uh that was kind of like humanity choosing division instead of unity yeah um if we would have chosen unity at that time and we would have potentially leaned more into the spiritual side of things as our tool to navigate through this through nature maybe you know and it might be crazy and i always say this but maybe we'd be communicating telepathically instead of with phones or remote viewing instead of facetime or astrally projecting instead of flying in jet planes i don't know uh so what do you think like what is the potential what do you see in like the next 50 to 100 years for mankind in, in just in our in your imagination if we were to fully embrace the power of dreams like what is the potential uh, well, something i always believe then that there's it would just be a better world, like a, a mo like like what you're saying. And like I also I speak about this in another video as well. Like instead of us just destroying the world and and using all the resources and like fighting wars and all this kind of stuff, I think if if we went down this kind of road with the your kind of uh, spirituality and and all that and stuff. It, like it's what people would say is the the great awakening and all this kind of thing. I think humanity, like, I think it will. I think it will come to like a, a convergence where the, it's it's gonna split. I don't think everybody will go that way, but I think it is going to be a point where enough people are going to go that way that there, there, there has to be some kind of change, but there will also need to be a lot of upheaval and maybe wars and all that kind of thing. So there'll be a lot of negative stuff, I think, to come. Uh, the only th thing that would maybe change it is the AI, if that does become conscious and, and exceeds us, it maybe yeah. push us in that direction. If it wants to help us, it maybe like, wipe us all out. I don't know. But, uh, like, it, it, uh, to me, there's got this, like, I think we're kind of, we're about here and it's, it's going to come to like a point mm -hmm. and then we'll either go this way or, or we'll just keep going past each other. But to me, I, I think there's enough people now in the world that, that 
just they're no happy. Like or, you can, I don't know about you, but me, like I'm no happy living this like normal life, and like you're just like a a work slave, and you, like you get treated badly and all this kind of thing, and they do their own about wars you have to go and fight and die for in some war that you don't even agree with or you, you die what like no, every like you could take anybody like I'm from Scotland, you're from America, you take somebody from Iran, somebody from Russia, just normal people. Many I, I bet you would all be the same. You just want to have a good, honest life and just like like whether it be working hard, providing for yourself and your family. Mm -hmm. It's not like an easy life. We're not wanting an easy life, but you're wanting a good, honest life. And I think that's just diversion now for, for the, the world that we're in. It's just all about money, greed, power, control. And like I say, I think enough people have kind of woke up to that now. And more people are talking about spirituality and dreams and right. like living in harmony with nature and this kind of thing. Because at the end of the day, if we destroy the planet, then we're all we're all dead, kind of thing. There's it doesn't benefit anybody. So like we can't be doing that, and we need to be thinking about ways how to live better lives for ourselves and for like the the, the world. So that's what I would see in the future that it is converging, and, and there is going to be like a a lot of upheaval, but it's going to split. It's, it's well. Ideally, we would all go the same way, but I, I can't see that happening. So I think there is going to be like a major split kind of thing, and I'm not really sure what that would entail. But uh, I'd imagine it will not be like an easy process kind of thing. So uh, yeah, there's going to be resistance. Aye, uh, but that that's the way I would see things going. Because like even just Scotland's like a a tiny wee country, but most people you speak to here, they've had enough of it. Right. And the people woke up to kind of... It's strange that even with me, because like I was brought up like a a Catholic, mm -hmm. so religious and that, but I was never really religious. And then when you're in that kind of teenager years to a wee bit older, you don't really care. But the older I've got, it seems like I've went back to spirituality, I wouldn't say religion as such, but definitely spirituality, and now I'm getting to the point where I think most of the stuff in the Bible could be true, and this could be like again, like the way things are going, like even with like AI and Armageddon and mm -hmm. the second and hey, Jesus and all this, like, yeah. it's like I wouldn't yeah, I wouldn't dismiss any of it Whereas even like five years ago, I'd be like nonsense, like absolute rubbish again. Whereas now I'm like, like the way things are going, and that, I, I could see that happening. Yeah. So. Wow. That was, that was beautiful and poetic. And it was like the best response I could possibly imagine. Uh, uh, and I agree with you on so many things. And uh, yeah, yeah. All of that, yes. And I was I was very anti-religious for a while, too. You know, I studied the Bible just to debunk it, you know. And then the more you learn about it, actually, and the more you learn about other religions and philosophies in general, I think you could find a common thread through most of them. Um, and the more you make those connections, the more revealing it is. Yeah. There's de definitely, I think there's, even with religions and that, and you talk about like the Anunnaki and stuff, right. they could be gods or they could be again where religion started, it could be even like a higher consciousness mm -hmm. like they created us or, or something it's, that, I, I do believe in some sort of creator or god I'd say now, like the more I've looked into it, like what you're saying whereas mm -hmm. before I just, like you were always brought up god and like the guy with the beard right. and the, the robe and stuff, and it's like, I don't believe in that, but I do believe in something. I'm just not sure what it is. But to me, again, it could all be connected like to, to what's going on and maybe why everybody's kind of waking up and stuff. Yeah. But I, I suppose it's a journey that we all need to kind of go on and see 
see where it, where it ends up, can I say? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that one guy I was talking about earlier, uh, Zechariah Sitchin, he's a biblical scholar too. So everything he was talking about with, with the Anunnaki and, and the Nephilim and, yeah. you know, the he connects it all to the Bible and biblical texts. That's why it's so fascinating. And, uh, yeah, I, I believe humanity has potential. I have faith in humanity. Um, and like you said, dude, I, I agree that people are waking up and we're tired of this. Uh, we're, we're not just cogs in a wheel. We don't want to be slaves to the system anymore. Uh, and I think trans- transcendence is possible, I think, personally. Not for 100% and not totally permanently. Like you said, there's going to be resistance and opposition. and But overall transcendence, and I think we're going in the right direction. And I do think we're reaching a threshold as well. Yeah. You think about it, if we are all living better, healthier lives and we're able to, like our minds are not as clouded or stressed with everything that, what, that's going on, and the, to me, the possibilities are endless that, that we could open up our minds and, and explore different kind of worlds and dimensions. And right now, you don't you don't get a chance. You're just too worried about, like, trying to get food on the table and mm-hmm. paying your rent. You're stressed with everything else. So, like, you've no time to really think about any of that. But imagine if the whole world was all thinking about that and everybody was doing that, then I think the possibilities could be endless kind of thing. Even like right, in my other videos where I was on a bit of design, like a free energy device and all that, like if that's me, just like coming up with that, thinking about it, imagine if everybody in the world was thinking about how can we solve energy? I'm right. We could come up with something, but it's the fact that we're not. It's all about greed and money and power and control and that so i think yeah i'm sorry Uh, yeah man and and it's that you know just the struggle of everyday life and then it almost seems like for a long time we've been intentionally distracted by certain certain groups as well you know so if if you're not uh not just you know working every day and worried about bills but then any extra imagination we have is going to be wasted on something that they give us whether it's sports or or movies or you know just the endless mindless distractions nothing against sports or movies like you know obviously i love sports and i love movies but i'm just saying like no, i get what you're saying i understand it's a lot here yeah, as well it's just it's designed to, to numb your brain kind of thing, uh, rather than like encourage your brain kind of thing, even, you think even about things like what we're talking about would be like discouraged kind of thing right. uh, so it would be like, like if you were talking like, well even up until recently if you were talking about aliens mm-hmm. you were mocked and ridiculed mm-hmm. that's just so they can keep the control of that where, like, if they were honest, then it would, everybody could talk about it, could maybe benefit everybody, but they want to keep that to their shell, keep the control. So they're, they're dictating the narrative, they're shutting down kind of thoughts and feelings and expressions. They're trying to just guide everybody down whatever path they're wanting. Whereas if everybody was free to think their own way, but also in a collective, then I think, again, like, we could solve anything and the possibility of endless, I think. And that's what, that's what I would see for the future. To me, I think there's too many people like us and other people. We're too far down this road, road now that if we need to fight for it, then I think we would, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, it'd be your fight. It wouldn't be, I'm not fighting for all this other stuff that I don't even agree with anyway. So I think there will be that kind of point where that the balance needs to tap and the direction changes kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't possibly agree more. It's crazy. Aye. And it, see, the thing is, it not just be me and you that agree about this. I'd imagine people that see this will be like, I agree with that as well, because everybody's the same. 
unless you're at the top and you've got all the power and control. Of course. Like they be, but I'd say most people, whether it be in Scotland, America, Russia, China, mm -hmm. Iran, everybody, North Korea, like if you ask just normal people, they would all probably agree with what we've said. And that's, that's, the point. Weird, yeah. that's what we need to remember, that there's, there's lots of people like us that we all think and feel the same because we're just human. And your natural instinct isn't it to, to go out and kill everybody or whatever. You just want a good life and a positive life. And just, I'm not saying like an easy life, but just mm -hmm. good, a, a good community, good working together and solving problems, making things better. Whereas what, what we've got now is people just making things worse when they look at So I think that's how lots of people are now turning away for that because it's obvious now. Whereas before it maybe wasn't obvious, now it's obvious. Right. I agree, man. I agree. Life, I think nature makes life hard enough. I think these artificial, the artificial struggles that we create for ourselves as humans are completely unnecessary yep. and counterproductive. And yeah, nobody wants, I'm not looking to just like sit on the beach all day and eat grapes. It's not about an easy life. I mean, most people that I know that I, that I respect and that I see around me, like you said, we're willing to work hard for it, but, uh, but not for this. Yeah. We need a higher purpose. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, as we land the plane here, uh, maybe if you want to tell people exactly where to find you and, uh, like what, what plans you might have for the future and, uh, what else? My dad went to sleep and he said, good night mates. So good night, dad. I love you. Uh, yeah, this this has been amazing, dude. And, and like, I could talk to you forever about all this stuff. So I hope to get you back. I, no, I'll come back on here. I'm, I'm looking at it as well. It's like half past three in the morning here. So I'll, 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 I'll uh, sum it up. Uh, uh, but I'll definitely I'll come back on because I've, I've really enjoyed this as well. It's been a good, it's not, we've not just, we've done the dreams and the visions and all that, but we've, we went into lots of stuff, lots of interesting stuff, and I love, I could talk about stuff like this all the time, so I'll definitely yeah. be back on. But uh, I suppose, like, if anybody's want to find me, it's really just the, the Dream Keeper YouTube. Uh, even if you just put, like, the link or something yeah, and whatever, Ken, uh, in the... I post it. Uh, and that's basically, it's just simple, it's just Dream Keeper, 369 and it's on YouTube uh, and that's what we'll be doing moving forward of <clears throat> like us you've already seen I've got a, a, quite a few videos up just in me talking and I've got the, the meditation videos and the nature walks and between the three of them the three playlists I'll be adding to them and just continuing on and, and that's basically what I'll be doing for the future and hopefully just growing it and growing it and like I say I'll come back on here anytime as well uh, thank you man uh, everyone everyone enjoyed it my sister said she loved it Dee Dee said great session uh, you are you are a great speaker I love the way your brain works okay I'm just going to throw that out there dude it's, it's crazy crazy awesome I think you're as well like I uh, like you're you're really thoughtful and uh, good questions and you know what you're talking about as well. So I've really enjoyed the, the interaction. Thank you. And I'm gonna it's gonna take me some time to download this video from Facebook, but I'm gonna download it. Uh, I'll hit you up in Messenger or something if you could give me your email and I'll email you a copy of this video. I need problem. Okay, man. Very cool. And uh, we'll do this again. I'm definitely going to be in touch with you. Cool. Go right. subscribe, people. Right. Thanks, See you all later. Thank, right. thank you, man. Good night. Bye.